I want to walk you over and show you my persimmon tree. Actually, I have several persimmon trees on the property and uh, only one of them have I planted. It's a Taninashi persimmon tree, the one that I planted. Planted it, I guess, last year and it's not done very well. It didn't do anything at all until this year and it leafed out just a little bit this year, but I'm not really sure it's gonna make it. I guess it's too early to tell. I've left it alone and we'll see. I've experienced that for a few trees that I've planted that if I just leave it alone sometimes that uh, Sometimes it uh, it does okay. I was over here the other day and this persimmon tree, I just uh, caught a glimpse of it. I didn't even know it was there, if I'm completely honest. It's over here next to, ugh, sun over there. See the sun back there? Ugh, it's bright. This is our big pile of wood chips. There's been a lot of weeds and stuff grow up around it, letting them decompose. And over here is the persimmon tree. You can tell it's a persimmon tree by the persimmon that's on it. In California, when we lived in California at church, there were some people who, uh, uh, Sam and Kathy Flippins, uh, and there were others too, brought some big persimmons. They were probably, uh, you know, uh, I couldn't get my hand all the way around them. But these persimmons are a little different. Uh, these are just wild persimmons that are over here. So a lot of times they don't get very ripe until after a frost. I think there are a few ripe ones over here. I was actually over here the other day and I picked a few. Uh, but uh, this one looks pretty ripe. And you can tell they're ripe by if they're a little uh, squishy, just a little squishy. If they're not ripe, they're very astringent. Uh, they're very uh, uh, tart and they're not very good. In fact, uh, they're kind of a unique flavor. They're kind of a unique flavor anyway. It's hard to describe exactly. It's almost like a, a Kool-Aid. Uh, it's. It reminds me of vacation Bible school whenever I was a kid, eating the stuff that they offered you in a basement. And they have seeds inside of them. I'm gonna take these seeds back, uh, back to the house and show you in a few minutes. They say if you cut these seeds open, that they'll tell you what type of winter you're gonna have. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that when we get to the house. So I'm gonna take a few of these seeds and we'll put them in my pocket and we'll take them to the house and I'll cut them open for you. See the seeds? I've never counted how many seeds are in one of these before. I think some of them are different, but I'll count these. One, two, three, four, five, six. See? Six of them. It's got alternating leaves. So you see one goes this way and then one goes this way, uh, but they skip. They're not right next to each other. And one side of the leaf is shiny and the other side is not. It's kind of matted. The leaves aren't really how I tell them apart. The persimmons themselves is how I tell it's persimmon tree and also the bark of the tree. Let me take you a little bit over here closer to the bark uh, so you can see. The bark of the tree is another one of the ways you identify the tree. Uh, this one is not persimmon. Uh, I know it might be kind of hard to see with the uh, dappled sun, but uh, if you look a little closer, you can see that this has little warts on it. Uh, this is one of the ways that you identify a hackberry. This is a hackberry tree, but uh, it is definitely one of the ones that's easily identified by the bark. Now I'm gonna take you over here so you can see the persimmon tree. This is the persimmon tree. The bark of the tree and the trunk of the tree is kind of dark. So it's darker than a lot of the others. Not only that, but it's really kind of rough like a crocodile skin. I've got two or three of them close to my house, but I've never seen any persimmons on them. Uh, this one does have a persimmon on it. I don't know for sure, maybe I'll look in a second and tell you, uh, but um, maybe uh, only some of them produce fruit. Let me walk over here and see if uh, this other persimmon is still over here and has any persimmons on it. That tree over there is a little older and larger. This one behind me is also a persimmon tree. The leaves look quite different on it actually. It's a little bit more out in the open. The bark isn't quite as dark, but it is very alligator-like as well. Look up above. The leaves uh, have some dark spots on them and they've lost a lot of leaves. It's lost a lot of leaves from it. It does have some persimmons on there. See the persimmons over here on it? I know it's kind of hard to see from that distance, but uh, these aren't very ripe. Last year, this tree looked a bit different. There was a large tree over here that uh, went down. Do you see it right here? Uh, this tree did have a lot of, provide a lot of shade for this persimmon tree. It might be kind of an understory tree. Uh, all the other ones that I've seen on the property are kind of understory trees in a significant amount of shade. I haven't been over here in a while. 
I'm gonna walk over here and see if this might be down on the fence. The fence isn't quite as hot as it used to be. Here it is behind me. Um, I had the pigs over here in this area last year. I'm kind of glad it went down the rest of the way, to be honest with you, uh, because it was kind of dangerous the way it was. I probably put the pigs back over here this winter sometime, so they'll clean this area up, and then uh, then they'll have a little bit of shelter with the trees and stuff like that as well. This is over here close to the old property line. We just bought this farm over here. We can't manage it all right now. We bought it because we wanted to keep it, uh, you know, put it back in the family and, and invest in it, have something to give to our kids in the future. It's over here close to the old property line. And again, I'm gonna put the pigs over here. There's a strand of electric right here uh, that's going right back over here that I'll attach the fence to. Uh, so I can keep the pigs in here uh, this next winter. Actually, the property line, uh, we got it surveyed. The old property line was uh, just a bit further, maybe about, uh, 30 or 40 feet that direction. This is the tree line uh, that was there. It doesn't matter where the old property line was, I guess, because we own this property and that property, and this goes clear to the road that's just over there. It's a whole lot easier to delineate now. I've done a whole lot of rotational grazing before. I've done several videos on that. I actually haven't rotated these guys in a while, and you can tell a difference. You can see all this broom's edge back behind me, and you can tell where they've been. I'm gonna rotate them again soon, but I wanna get back over to the house. This was way over here. Uh, I want to get back over to the house and show you these seeds when they're cut open and what it's supposed to mean whenever you see the things that are in there. I showed you Rua and uh, Petunia the other day. I guess it's only fair that I show you me and Petunia. Here are the other ones back here, but here's Petunia right next to me. Hey Petunia. She's a good pig. I don't... I don't know why Rue was so scared. She's just not used to her. And to be honest with you, I guess I do kind of understand. Uh, they're a little scary uh, because they're big and they've bit at me before. She's kind of biting at my pants now. Well, I think she smells the persimmon seeds in my pocket. <laughs> and she might want them. <laughs> uh, she's doing well. I don't know if you can see her babies back there in the background. She's a good pig. She's my friend. I like her. She's, about, she's become about my favorite. So I took a look and persimmon trees actually do better in the sun than they do in the shade. They do better in the sun. I don't know why that one was looking a little different, maybe uh, because the other tree died. We'll see how it works out. And also they are dioecious, that means they're male and female. That is the American persimmon, the common persimmon. If you get uh, the Asian persimmons, then a lot of times those uh, are self-fertile. That's why not all of my persimmon trees are producing fruit, only some of them do. But I've got these, uh, I got these seeds here, and I've got my kanifi, and I've got the cutting board. I'm gonna cut them in half, and I wanna see what kind of winter we're gonna have. If you have a spoon, that means that you're gonna have to shovel the snow away. It's like a, a shovel. If you have a knife, the winds are gonna be cutting you like a knife. And if you have a fork, what's, what is it with a fork? Will you look real quick, Mama? I think that means that it's gonna be a mild winter, but I don't know what the fork is supposed to, you know, the symbolism is. There's not anything really, apparently what Rua looked up, it's just a fork is a mild winter. So I've got one cut, I'm just gonna reveal them at the same time. When you cut them, you cut them right down the middle. So you gotta be really careful. Cut it right down the middle. They're, they're pretty slimy. These have been in my pocket for a while. Here's the first one. One side don't have anything, but the other side looks like it has kind of a spoon. Does that look, does that look spoony to you? Spoon or a knife? There's another one. That looks spoony or knifey. That looks the same. Spoon or a knife, don't you think? Another one that looks pretty much the same, like a spoon or a knife. 
According to that, it's going to be a harsh winter. We're going to have to scoop away the snow or the wind will be icy and biting. But uh, that's just an old wives tale. I don't know for sure, you know, what it'll be like. Persimmons are, uh, you know, really nice. The wood's used for a lot of different things. If you haven't grown one, then you can grow them or uh, you can just look for them and forage for them. If you like things like this, like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, select all so you never miss a notification. Thanks. Bye.